Interestingly, Wukong's console performance has bizarrely polarized players. On one extreme, we've seen folks swear that there are absolutely no performance issues whatsoever. Spoiler alert. This isn't true. And on the other hand, some folks swear that the game is unplayable. Spoiler alert. This also isn't true. Thanks to some very close friends and siblings that played the game on PS5 and PC, we were able to build a non-biased review about the game. So thanks to Andrew and Daniel, we bring you a short in-depth spoiler-free review of Black Myth Wukong on PS5. We made this review a bit differently, with a mix of PS5 PS5 footage, PC max settings footage, and performance mode footage. The cool part will let you figure out what is PC and what is PS5 footage. Although it might be hard as YouTube compression has no mercy on image quality. We hope you enjoy this and will help you make an educated decision on whether to buy now or wait for patch fixes. And hey, hit that like button for me. It truly helps. The fruit oh, yes. tree here. Perfect timing. This peach knew I needed a snack. <laughs> Black Myth Wukong has been on many gamers' radars since its jaw-dropping trailer first dropped in 2020. With its stunning visuals and intriguing take on the classic Chinese novel Journey to the West, it promised to be a standout in the action RPG genre. Now that the game is finally here, I dove into its world on the PS5 to see if it lives up to the hype. It's clear that Black Myth is a game that excels in some areas but stumbles in others. Now let's talk gameplay. Anyone expecting Black Myth Wukong to be a character action game like God of War or Devil May Cry is in for a rude awakening. This game is very much a Souls-like, with all the brutal difficulty and methodical combat that comes with it. While the developers have been somewhat cagey about labeling it as such, there's no mistaking the influence of From Software here. Players will find themselves battling through challenging encounters, with shrines serving as checkpoints similar to bonfires in Dark Souls. The combat is punishing, requiring careful dodging, parrying, and a keen understanding of enemy patterns. Boss fights are particularly intense, with some acting as major roadblocks that will test your patience and skill. The game does feature some lighter mini-bosses and encounters, but the harder bosses can be grueling, requiring multiple attempts to conquer. The game starts off relatively easy but ramps up in difficulty pretty quickly. Learning the mechanics and beating bosses is incredibly satisfying, much like in Souls games. It's challenging but rewarding. I've seen some complaints about the story in early reviews, but from what I've experienced, it's quite engaging. I'm definitely invested in it and haven't found it lacking so far. I've had the most success with a very aggressive playstyle, which suits me well. Initially, the main character's weapon movement felt a bit odd, and the motion blur was slightly off-putting, but after an hour of play, I'm getting used to it. I'm not sure if there will be issues later on or why they chose not to send the PS5 version for review, but so far it's looking very promising. So there are three different stances you can use with your staff smash, pillar, and thrust. You can switch between them whenever you want, and each one has its own unique moves you can unlock. They're all super useful depending on the situation, like smash is perfect for one-on-one -on -one fights or just general brawls. Pillar lets you hop on top of your staff to dodge attacks, and later on you can even chill up there and take a drink like you're at a rooftop bar while enemies are trying to reach you. Thrust comes in a bit later and works like a spear, letting you jab from a distance, pull back, and then go in for the kill. Honestly, I love switching between them all. It keeps the combat fresh. Plus, you can transform into more powerful creatures for a while, including some of the bosses you fight early on. There are also a bunch of other tools to help you in battles, which is great if you're not used to games like Dark Souls. You can collect spirits that let you transform into defeated enemies or summon things like poisonous snakes from the ground. You can even roar to knock enemies down or slip into the body of a bird-like ninja that slices with dual blades. But the spells? Man, the spells are where it gets really fun, they're stylish, and you don't feel too restricted when using them. You've got four slots for these abilities, and each one uses a different amount of mana. One of the first spells you get lets you freeze enemies in place for a few seconds, which is awesome if you need a break to heal or want to extend your combo. When the enemy is free and goes for an attack, you can turn to stone to parry it, and then maybe hit them with a shadow clone jutsu like in Naruto, letting your clones do the work. It's so satisfying to be able to use these abilities smoothly without feeling like you're breaking the flow of the fight. The game has a skill tree that's packed with options but it can feel a bit cluttered. There are a lot of basic upgrades like increasing your health or mana, which can make you wonder if you should spend your points on those or go for the cooler stances and spells. Luckily, you can refund your points anytime and try different builds, which is a nice touch. As for gear, there's less focus on it compared to other games. If you take down a big enemy and they drop some crafting materials, you can combine those with other items to make new staves and armor sets. It's kind of like God of War where there are rarity levels and set bonuses, but it's not too deep. You'll just switch to the best gear as the game progresses. 
progresses, so it doesn't bog you down with too many stats. This all means you spend less time in menus and more time enjoying the epic boss fights. And let me tell you, the bosses are not only well balanced but also visually stunning. You'll face things like dragons spiraling through the air, icy mountains in the background, and a corrupted Buddha causing the ground to crack and erupt. Each boss has unique attack patterns and gimmicks that keep you on your toes, so you're always engaged, both mentally and physically. Unlike some Souls-like games that offer a variety of weapons, Black Myth Wukong sticks players with the legendary staff from Journey to the West. While this limits weapon variety, the game introduces different stances that players can switch between, each offering unique heavy attacks. This helps keep the combat somewhat fresh. Though the lack of weapon diversity may disappoint those who enjoy experimenting with different playstyles, spells and spirits also play a crucial role in combat. Players can unlock a variety of spells that add strategic depth to battles, such as immobilizing enemies, summoning clones, or transforming into foes to use their abilities. Spirits, which act as powerful summonable allies, further expand combat possibilities, though the game limits how many you can equip at once. So is it a Souls-like or not? Black Myth Wukong is undeniably part of that genre. The game's structure, combat mechanics, and overall design echo the Souls-like formula. From the way players progress through levels, to the brutal difficulty of its boss encounters, the game's lack of a retrieval mechanic, where players can recover lost XP after dying, is one of the few deviations from the traditional Souls-like blueprint, but this doesn't fundamentally change the experience. What I don't understand is... You bastards killing my kind! The story in Black Myth Wukong is rooted in Journey to the West, but it's not the game's strongest element. The narrative serves more as a backdrop for the action rather than a driving force. You will encounter various characters from the classic tale, with each chapter featuring its own self-contained story. While there is an overarching plot, it's not particularly engaging, and the dialogue can be clunky at times. The voice acting is passable, but it doesn't do much to elevate the material. The game's most memorable moments come not from the story itself, but from the bizarre and visually striking scenes and characters that populate Black Myth's world. Unfortunately, these moments are fleeting, and the story as a whole doesn't leave a lasting impression. Starting with the performance, Black Myth Wukong delivers a visually stunning experience on the PS5. It's not without its technical issues. The most noticeable problem is occasional stuttering and input lag, particularly when using spirits in combat. There were times when the game would briefly freeze or fail to register my inputs correctly, which can be incredibly frustrating in the heat of battle. Audio issues also cropped up during my playthrough. On a few occasions, the game switched from English to Chinese audio without warning, and there were rare instances where the audio cut out entirely. While these issues were in frequent, they detract from the overall experience, especially in a game where immersion and atmosphere are so important. The level design is another mixed bag. Early levels feel bland and restrictive, with invisible walls preventing exploration and a lack of interesting environmental details. However, the game's later chapters open up significantly, offering more complex and visually engaging areas to explore. Still, the early game's shortcomings can leave a sour taste, especially when paired with the game's technical hiccups. The game offers two modes, one targeting 1440p at 60fps and the other aiming for 2160p at 30fps. In theory, this should cater to different player preferences, but in practice, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Those who have been attempting to play on the performance mode for some 60fps goodness have complained of constant stuttering, poor image quality, and texture issues. The quality mode offers 30 to 35fps, whereas the balanced mode can go up 45fps. The general consensus is that performance mode isn't the best way to play right now. In 1440p performance mode, the game generally runs at 60fps, but it doesn't always hit that target, especially during cutscenes and more intense battles. Frame drops can be noticeable, which can be jarring in a game where timing and precision are key. The visual quality also takes a hit in performance mode, with noticeable drops in texture detail and overall sharpness. Despite these issues, I found that performance mode was still the best option, as the smoother gameplay outweighs the drop in visual fidelity. On the other hand, 2160p quality mode offers a crisper, more detailed experience. While the game's visual splendor is fully realized in this mode, the sacrifice and frame rate is a tough pill to swallow, particularly in a game that relies heavily 
heavily on quick reflexes. I'm really enjoying Black Myth Wukong so far, so no hate here, but I want to be honest, it's definitely not running at a solid 60 FPS in performance mode. I know some people might downvote this because there's a lot of excitement around the game, but I want to be clear. The game is good, however, I'm confident that a Digital Foundry review will back me up on this. It's just not hitting a steady 60 FPS. The frame drops are especially noticeable in cutscenes. I understand that some players might not be sensitive to this, and that's totally fine, but for those who are, it's something to be aware of. I also noticed a significant drop in visual quality when switching from balanced to performance mode. Despite this, I still think performance mode is the best way to play, even with the trade-offs. I just don't want people to go in with false expectations. The game is perfectly playable and really fun, but being transparent about these performance issues is important. Black Myth Wukong is an ambitious and visually stunning game that falls just short of greatness due to some technical issues. If these were ironed out, this game could easily reach a 9 out of 10. However, as it stands, the performance hiccups, particularly on the PS5, bring it down to an 8. That being said, there's still hope on the horizon. The upcoming PS5 Pro, with its dedicated ray tracing engine and potential for up to 4.5 times the performance of the standard PS5 could significantly enhance how Black Myth Wukong runs. The PS5 Pro's rumored features, Super Resolution PSSR tech, which is designed to deliver enhanced image quality and upscaling, could also help stabilize the frame rate while maintaining the game's gorgeous visuals. With the PS5 Pro's increased CPU and GPU power, we might finally see Black Myth Wukong running at a consistent 4K resolution with ray tracing enabled at a smooth 60 FPS. This upgrade could transform the game from a technical mixed bag into the polished experience it was meant to be. Until then, while Black Myth Wukong remains a solid entry in the Souls-like genre, it's one that will likely shine even brighter on the next generation of consoles.